Good morning and welcome to cccliveCases.org. I'm Samir Mehta, your moderator for today. Sorry for uh, a slight delay in starting uh, because we've got something very interesting to show you. This is a feedback from a previous failed chronic total occlusion which we want to show you how we have handled it, uh, how you should be handling it, and uh, hopefully that will be useful for you. This is session number 13. I am uh, delighted uh, to take us into the second year of the transmission. I am also happy to invite uh, on the webcast uh, numerous uh, uh, viewers from uh, mainland China and Singapore, and uh, happy to have them join you. Samin, good morning. Uh, you are ready with your team? Yes, good morning, Samir, and of course to all our viewers uh, all over the globe. And we are very ha happy to enter into the second year yes, of live Yes, congratulations. Cases. And uh, no, really, it has been a phenomenal educational experience. If anything else, uh, besides um, when we started our live symposium uh, in uh, complex cases back in 1998, was very gratifying when people approached and uh, said that how uh, teaching points we have made. And now, addition of this monthly webcast has been super and phenomenal. And uh, with that note, I start with uh, my associate Anu on left side and my fellow Mitch and uh, Jason. Good on morning, the right Anu. Side. Anu, say good yeah. morning. Good morning, and uh, welcome to the second year of uh, this uh, complex uh, live cases. I think uh, we're just going to uh, present the today's case. Yeah. No. What we will do, actually. Um, and I'll tell you why. I have special, and that's why we can tell our viewers, and uh, I'm sorry for it, because we will modify it a little bit. Usually, we talk about the present case in all our cases. I want to show one case for a special region, the case number 11. If we can go to the next slide. This is the case we did on uh, May uh, 20th, which is the patient uh, who had a total occlusion of the LAD, and we tried to do a PCI. Next. And you can see here, this is on May 18th, contralateral injection, totally occluded LED, large LED. Next. Uh, and uh, we tried with the various uh, wire techniques. Next. And the wire uh, with the escalation of uh, wires getting up to, up to the confianza. Next. Uh, the see little cloud at 2 to 3 o'clock position with a micro wire perforation. And, uh, but hemodynamically fine. Next. And overall, this case. And then this is where we ended. Next. And actually, uh, because of this micro perforation, we stopped the angiomax, we stopped the procedure, which is our live webcast 11 on May 18th. Next. See the cloud. And of course, after stopping uh, angiomax, uh, this is again, you think that it might just uh, continue to uh, increase the perforation. We stopped the angiomax. Next. And about 10 minutes later, see almost disappearing. But we ended at this point. Next. And this is where. Uh, actually, uh, we can have next slide. Uh, yeah, and next. That basically, that of the all 12 cases, we had this failed CT of the LED, no complication, and this was the only unsuccessful complex case of our first year of 12 live case series. And uh, the point uh, Anu wanted to make, go back to the slide, please, uh, in terms of... Uh, the, so, uh, sorry, uh, we want to go minus. Uh, can we go back? Yes, we can. Yeah. Uh, about this angiomax, which people are very much concerned, minus. Uh, in terms of uh, the issue of the wire perforation and the angiomax, and this is actually taken out from our paper. And we want to talk on that? Yeah, if you see that, uh, you know, the last angiogram, actually we had a few questions that how we would handle if there is a micro wire perforation which we sh uh, you could see in that uh, vessel in the RAO view that it went through one of the tiny branch and what we call we could see a cloud. In this kind of situation what we normally do is stop the angiomax. Uh, we knew the ACT was still about 300. We can do a balloon uh, uh, you know, dilation in the proximal portion of the vessel which we did for a couple of minutes. And this is a very important slide. Uh, to understand uh, the pharmacokinetics and dynamics of the angiomax, how exactly it works uh, you know, with the thrombin. If you see there, the thrombin, it has uh, two sides, and the, when there is an infusion of thrombin going on, this actually is a paper that have came out in CCI uh, regarding how we manage wire perforation. This an entire thing has been explained there, that if uh, the uh, bivalidin gets uh, attached to the site, if you see there, uh, the exocyte one, but this will happen 
that uh, it happens uh, with a low affinity, reversibly bound, but, uh, but very high concentration. That means you need an infusion going in the body. As soon as you stop the infusion, the thrombin that at that particular site, the bivalvulin gets cleaved. That is uh, figure B. And what you see in figure C is a uh, bivalvulin completely uh, gets uh, uh, you know excluded from that site, and the thrombin is now free and available for hemostasis. And this is exactly what we see in our clinical practice. That when we do this kind of complex cases, whenever we have wire perforation and very rare uh, incidence of device perforation, that uh, people are worried. What can we do if angiomax is given? There is no. Uh, agent to reverse uh, angiomax, but you don't need it because this is what exactly happens. Within few minutes of stopping the infusion, thrombin is available for uh, the thrombus formation, and this has been nicely demonstrated in this particular case. Excellent. So that and is exactly what you had done at that time. Just stop yeah. the drip and uh, when you, did you the do. I mean, you keep the patient on the table, watch the patient for 10-15 minutes. She had no hemodynamic compromise. Then we. Uh, you know, took her and washed her overnight and was discharged home next All day. All right. So the and patient patient has a small uh, micro perforation. You manage it. Patient goes home. So what did you do after that, Samin? Yeah. If you see that, if you can show the next slide, she just came back a couple of weeks uh, later, uh, be, uh, ba back. This is when she came back, July 13, 2010. And if you let it play, same angiogram and see what happened to that cloud and the perforation that we had seen when we left her in May. Everything disappeared. LED is still the same, and the total occlusion is the same. And we had our same strategy, went with the fine cross, with the escalating uh, wires, and with the miracle, uh, sorry, confidence that we were able to get into the lumen. If you give, go next. Go next. You can't see the lumen. Yeah. We could not see a lumen mainly because uh, the lumen was filled through the septal collateral, and I think once the wire was through, that uh, we uh, could not see the distal lumen. We did a small injection. We were able to see, make, uh, see that it was uh, we were in the LED, uh, multiple balloon dilatation, stent of the LED, PTCA of the diagonal, and uh, show the final result. Yeah. This is what it is. I know that is exceptional, and uh, I think uh, the value of uh, showing this case is uh, clear. Uh, the strategy to bring the patient uh, back, uh, I think a lot of people would just uh, give heart when they have uh, the small uh, complication and uh, send the patient to surgery, whereas uh, this is just uh, outstanding, and I'm uh, sure the patient uh, is, uh, is very grateful and doing well. Yeah, she's and, doing fine. And I think that's, this is the important point we wanted to make for the CTO, that one that you schedule one or two cases, it, they take time, and the cutoff which we have put in the question answers, that uh, contrast unit or contrast volume of uh, maybe 5 cc per kilogram, 300 to uh, 500 cc, and overall your 100 c uh, minutes of fluoro, which translate to three hours of procedure time, that kind of cutoff. And then bring the patient for second try. Clearly, the CTO is like if you uh, unsuccessful those 20% of cases initially, you bring them back. Of those 20, I guarantee you 80 plus percent will succeed second time, like this case. So the overall aggregate success of CTO at Mount Sinai over the last three years with the new wire techniques has been over 95%. So clearly, the CTO uh, becomes the two-part procedure. Now, with that note... We go so, to I mean, the, I also noticed that you brought this patient back in uh, between uh, six to seven weeks. Is that what you would recommend? Usually, the healing time for this kind of uh, dissection that we have created is anywhere uh, seven to eight weeks. I would say if, you, if the patient can wait for eight weeks is ideal, but six weeks is minimum. And during this time, uh, you keep him on aspirin and yeah, plavix? Yeah, aspirin and plavix. Continue the aspirin, plavix, and uh, other medical therapy, that, uh, statin especially, that, that uh, we would normally do. Exceptional follow-up, Samin. You have another uh, challenging total occlusion today, I see. All right. Let's go to our live case uh, number 13, which is a 53-year-old male. And it's a little complex history, so that we'll go through the slide. This patient actually presented uh, early uh, this part of the year in February with the multivessel ischemia well, after uh, uh, presented with crescendo angina. And he had basically apical scar and ischemia in the both RC and LA and circumflex distribution. He had various risk factors, and we brought him, and actually uh, we uh, did, uh, he has three-vessel disease. Ejection fraction was 35%, with a syntax score of 27.5, dyskinetic apex with thrombus. Uh, and, of course, uh, the bifurcating 
total occlusion of the LED and there is a diagonal there and the two lesions in the circ and two lesions in the RCA. So that at that time, because of extensive disease, all the syntax score was less than 33, we still recommended surgery, but clearly the patient's uh, uh, reluctance for surgery, uh, patient... Uh, no, uh, if you, we're going to show you the yeah. angiogram, the yeah. patient's uh, distal yeah. vessel uh, was a very small caliber. Okay. And LED also was small caliber, and since Lima was not an option, uh, I think when various options were given to him and discussed with the primary cardiologist, uh, they felt uh, let's do the viable area, which was RCA circumflex, and uh, do the LED viability, and then we go from there. Yeah. And therefore, the patient had two stents, uh, Zions in the distal circ and OM2, 3.5 and 2.75 millimeter, and two stents in the RCA, 2.5 and 3 millimeters. So the four stents did good for about three, four months, and then started having recurrent chest pain. And recent, now they actually, PET scan is somehow, uh, all, of the, all of a sudden the PET scan are springing up. You know, there are a lot of uh, PET centers which almost, in my opinion, disappeared a few years ago, maybe because of some uh, new DRG codes. I, I'm seeing more PET scanning uh, now. Although it's good, because it gives you viability assessment also, which actually showed that now patient is ischemic in the anterior and anterolateral wall. That the mid anterior and anterolateral ischemia with a small apical scar, that inferior infolateral, which was the original ischemia, has completely disappeared. And that's where this patient is here now. And Anu will take you through. This is the LV. LV actually see that uh, you know we were the, initially he did have a small thrombus just on antiplatelet therapy that uh, you can see that the thrombus is gone. Today his EDP was actually 12. So on the medical therapy, his EDP has, and if you see his uh, right, the stents look good. He does have diffuse disease of the distal vessels, the PDA. And then if you go to the left system, left main is good. And again, same, circumflex, the stent look okay. Lot of disease in the distal vessel, and this is where we are with the LAD. The proximal LED is same, mild diffuse, but we have this uh, total occlusion with some bridge and uh, diffuse disease of the distal LED, and then we have a moderate size diagonal just before the total occlusion. But and his uh, same anticoagulation strategy wise, uh, he's young, he's a worker, was not uh, uh, you know, happy on uh, taking Coumadin. He was initially on the Plavix because he was young. We changed him to Pasugril, and he has been on aspirin Pasugril. And you see, the thrombus uh, I think has just uh, resolved on the antiplatelet therapy now. Pasugril. Yeah, you have some. Plavix. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we we did uh, do the you know Plavix. Uh, sorry, uh, Pasugril uh, uh, platelet inhibition is about 67 percent inhibited on 10 milligrams. Now, Samir, you have any question or we can just pick Yes, no, I, I want you to concentrate. Uh, you've got exactly 35 minutes to do a total occlusion, so I'll uh, uh, keep uh, bringing you the questions as they come, but uh, you have a task ahead of you. Uh, my only comment was that uh, I think in many ways the, the PET scanning here is a very good idea because uh, you need to demonstrate, uh, you know, with so much uh, distal disease, whether a part of it is coming from the... Uh, diffuse uh, distal uh, infloapical portion from the RCA, uh, but I think uh, the plan is there uh, to proceed with the LED. My other uh, thought was that uh, although you have explained uh, the rationale about leaving the LED alone, that uh, normally traditionally one would go for the more difficult vessel first. Uh, uh, so uh, one would argue that uh, you know it's a good idea to first try to do the LED, but uh, uh, I think all that in the view of the history is all clear, and let's proceed and uh, try to open the LED today. Right. While they're getting ready, I'll just quickly go through uh, uh, some of the slides if we can start. Yes. There are a few slides which will be loaded up just uh, for our viewers in a PDF format, and so I'll just go a little quickly and give the whole co you know concept so that we can start with uh, basically technical issues in this this case is the choice of antiplatelet therapy. Uh, as we know, anticoagulation, all cases are done with the bivarudin at Mount Sinai, uh, and uh, almost 60-plus uh, percent of cases in the United States. And of course, in some cases, 15-20 percent bolus of 2B3A. Then the choice of guide wires and techniques of CTO, newer devices, and bifurcation lesion issues, which is that how big is the side branch, ready to lose the side branch or not, like in this particular case, there is a medium-sized diagonal. And do you wire the both? And uh, and we'll talk about all this difficult wiring, jailing the side branch with the hydrophilic, or one stent versus two stent technique. And if it is stent techniques, what it should be. Next. Now, basically, next, the antiplatelet therapy the actually has evolved. 
uh, next uh, in uh, over last few years and now uh, we actually had two new agents which have been approved one now uh, old agent actually clopidogrel showing that giving it for one week at least double the dose in acute syndrome oic7 showed lower stent thrombosis so that many practitioners now are using a 150 mg of plavix uh, for at least one month uh, next and of course did not cause extra bleeding then the second agent next uh, is uh, prasagrel which everybody knows from uh, uh, timi38 that is effective compared to clopidogrel but cause more bleeding next and of course the some subset particularly young uh yeah uh, young uh, lower age uh, sorry lower weight which is less than 60 kilo or older age less th more than 75 and history of tia were the group which have a higher bleeding next and uh, therefore next what uh, has been shown that subgroup analysis patient with stemi patient with diabetic uh, and of course the stent thrombosis on plavix and uh, non responders probably will do better with prasagrel next and of course now we have another agent trial has been completed with the plato which is going to fda this month Uh, with the ticagrel or again better agent than clopidogrel next but also cause less bleeding i mean no increased bleeding compared to clopidogrel largely because of the bid dose and short acting next and this actually should be available next the many times what we have been doing in our lab is basically uh, going with the evidence base that patient comes in like this particular case if it's on plavix and so we'll do a acumatrix device testing and if there is inhibition we have the clear cut cut off that more than 40% is fine less than 40% you have a choice as long as patients are compliant with the medication that do you switch or increase the dose of plavix based on the clinical scenario next and of course this is where the we have made uh, because a lot of people ask the protocol i have put it although i would just not go through it only will say what we have done at mount sinai knowing based on the data the prasagrel was superior much superior to clopidogrel and at mm. the same time had a lower bleed not a increased bleeding Miller in subgroups of stemi multivessel diabetic clopidogrel allergy okay. clopidogrel non responders and stent thrombosis in clopidogrel compliant patients so those patients are getting prasagrel at present uh, and we are not changing it uh, uh, uniformly every patient next mm -hmm. now then issue comes uh, about the new uh, techniques of the guide wires Miracle. and so next which we actually have shown that basically next the guide wire for this purpose uh, the stiff wire guide wires which we need to have that uh, they do not perforate that's the whole goal then uh, they keep their tip shape next and of course uh, there is whole concept whether they should be hydrophilic or hydrophobic uh, or non polymer covered versus polymer covered there are various guide wires available next i'll not go into the individual one next but clearly the whole concept of the increasing escalation technique the stiffer wire you start with a simpler and go further and increase your success next the recent introduction uh, next of the progress family of the guide wire with the abbot actually helped some of the cases because they are really stiff wire with a very pointed a uh, uh, tip of 0.012 next next uh, and then the adjunct devices next the fine cross uh, micro catheter next uh, and then uh, we have the gopher uh, basically going through the total occlusions next uh and then tornus next and uh, corsair very nice addition to uh, tornus basically many times when tornus did not go corsair uh, actually next uh, where i put a comparison that really uh, help because of the pointed tip many time where tornus did not go corsair went and it's uh, again with the abbot uh, uh, incorporation making this uh, corsair and tornus both of them but we actually prefer now corsair Uh, because of his extreme pushability and pointed tip next now uh, and of course now we have a new device guide liner catheter which is called mother and child guide catheter additional 10 cm advanced to the guide catheter to provide extra support in many of these cases next next now then these three devices of front runner safe steer and crosshair are available we have experience but basically not used is all the wire technique next uh then many times this uh, we need to do rotation threat me but more importantly that cut in this inelastic plug because many of these are very tough lesions even if you put a balloon they don't expand so the using is the cutting balloon or the angio scalp angio scalp advantage is the longer can be 10 or 20 mm and it has a wire around it so the lower profile the both whether you decide for the cutting balloon or angio scalp is the choice we use angio scalp uh, in a more longer lesions 
the cutting balloon works very well for the osteal, but instant restenosis, longer lesions. If you need to go to high pressure, angiosculpt, we can go up to 16 to 18 atmosphere. Uh, in many of these cases, we use angiosculpt for that purpose. Next. And then just coming back to the bifurcation issues. Next. Important with the bifurcation is next. Uh, that what type of bifurcation? Next. Uh, basically, the type D. Next. And because of the branch point, we need to have a good results of the side branch. Next. So that uh, issue has been next. That many times when we put a stent in the main vessel and the side branch next, if you leave the gap, it has a high restenosis. Next. And therefore, many new, next, new, many techniques of the two stent have come up so that you can have a guaranteed coverage. Next. And this is actually have been shown. People are very much concerned. They are away from the two stent technique. I can tell you we have put the randomized trial. These are the seven randomized trial of the one stent versus two stent technique. As you can see in the beginning, one stent versus two stent, on the left side, we used to have a difference in the one and two stent technique. And look at the right side. Right side of the, the screen, you start seeing that there is no difference in the two stent versus one stent technique. So basically, in clearly in selected cases, two stent technique, you do not pay the penalty. And why? You have to select which two stent particularly if there is a very di the long side branch lesion, very large side branch, angulated side branch, two stent technique, go primarily, not the provisional. Starting two stent technique, in my opinion, will give the result just like we have shown in the precise SKS trial. Next. And of course, this does not have any difference in stent thrombosis. Again, the things have changed over the last few years. Uh, next. Therefore, if we have to put it as the one versus two stent controversy, that while simple approach of one stent in the main vessel may suffice, suffice in most bifurcation lesions, a complex strategy done correctly of two stents by own preferred technique may be required, especially if side branch is large or lesion is long and angulated. Next. And of course, uh, bifurcation stents will come hopefully in the next few years. Next. And then lastly, that if you started with the, uh, just an osteal branch lesion left, uh, it looks like 60-70%, but good flow. A lot of data have shown that you can leave it alone because there will be a you do FFR and despite angiographically looking bad lesion that uh, the, uh, the FFR is more than 7, 0.75 in majority of these cases. With that case, actually we are ready for uh, our uh, so uh, mean that's, case. that's a wonderful uh, six minute review of a 20 minute presentation only which you can do. Uh, there are uh, all these slides are going to be put on the website uh, for your review. There is one particular one which we'll uh, try to focus on some in later is the I thought that was extremely useful where you are using the prasugrel uh, instead of the clopidogrel. But uh, Anu, what is the plan uh, what uh, what do you have there the guide so, and what wire is that i think one point we wanted to show is uh, uh, when we did the rca picture you saw that uh, there was no filling of the led through the rca so we could not use a dual injection strategy here uh, we have a seven french again same long sheath so that we have a good support uh, a vl guide so with the fine cross we have a fielder wire to reach up to that uh, area and then okay. the one of the big issue in this case is I don't think still we see a very clear cut where is the opening uh, of the total occlusion and this least seems to be that in this area if we take a little picture here it may be still misleading I mean right. man, very very which tricky. wire is this yes sir fielder the fielder actually or regular fielder? Regular fielder. Okay. And uh, if you think there are, uh, you know, some micro channels, fielder X3 probably is a better wire. And the key is that you still need to have a floppy wire to deliver. Don't go with those stiffer wires. Otherwise, they will likely to cause the uh, damage to the vessel normal segment and more importantly, I mean dissection and secondly they lose their tip. So Samin, this yeah, would be your now. preferred strategy starting for most CTOs? Yes. So now we are going to go with the fielder XT. Same you have a tapered tip. It's a glide coated wire to see if there are any micro channels that may help us. If not, then we go with the Miracle 3. Excellent. Uh, Samin, quick question, very relevant, which has come through. The performance of so many increasing numbers of CTOs, uh, has that impacted uh, 
coronary bypass surgery at your institution? Well, I think uh, that clearly uh, the success rate of the, the CTO has increased and therefore many of these patients are not going for bypass which used to go in the past. But overall, I think the bypass volume actually has to slight increase at Sinai. One of the big reasons is that incorporation of the syntax score uh, into our clinical practice. And I can tell you that since uh, first time we announced the uh, use of the syntax score uh, in our rarely, the daily routine practice, uh, in our live symposium, I have got actually from uh, uh, the call, actually email from many of our uh, advanced uh, directors of the cath lab who we invited and uh, uh, both a moderator as well and so, try now, to see. Yeah. Uh, if you can yeah. see, I mean, my tip of the yeah, wire right. was there. So it's a single operator technique where you leave the wire and then get your fine cross, move slowly closer to the lesion and that has led, see that with the wire, and we so know that we are in the lumen because Anu, now just, we have proved the free movement. Just the tactile movement. feeling, did you, uh, you're able to describe that? Did, uh, did it feel uh, anything yeah, different? You, than... I did have resistance, and when you have resistance, what you do is two things, that you could be resistance, again, same thing, you could be subintimal and have resistance. So when you, yeah, and uh, go forward with the fine cross, then you know that uh, you are a, that the wire has gone forward and there's a free movement of the tip that uh, you are likely in the lumen same thing you could uh, go through the vessel through and through and have free movement in the pericardium so you know this uh, that you need to be careful about and clearly once you're in pericardium first thing you'll know some pvcs yeah right so the any time there's no, no pvcs then your wire goes in that rest assured that you are in the true lumen or maybe subintimal but definitely it's a positive sign. Do you want to do rota? Look, you've, yeah. just, you've just saved yourself 20 minutes of uh, live transmission time. And this, uh, this was, is, uh, this is uh, the same thing, it's uh, the fielder XT. So now nice what uh, you, you're, oh, no. you, you're planning to ablate there? Uh, I mean, there was some calcification. Uh, well, that's what actually we're trying to, we're taking retain. a picture now. Right. And let's see, uh, we make a decision what to do because there's a lot of disease in this case. Now, this is a very important step uh, of, that has 1. been shown. 5, 5. Though we knew that we, are, uh, that we are likely in the lumen because the wire moved very freely and the way it went was in the course, you got to always take your uh, catheter, whichever the transit catheter that you use, back to the main portion of the vessel or the guide and take a picture and make sure that you are truly in the lumen. Because what is the worst thing that can happen is you think very confident that you are in the lumen you go through your device, which is a balloon, and dilate, and then you realize that it was truly the virus in the pericardium. Yeah, though always kind of little fogarty if you have 1.5 balloon or uh, as we said, but you need to bring it back into the, uh, into the guide because don't leave it there. See, now we know because there is a, you can see that wire is in the distal vessel. You see a little bit, uh, uh, the, dye, uh, the uh, distal penetration of the dye, and the, this is the beauty of this, uh, uh, the fielder. XT, that if you find that micro channel concept, because to me, I'm not completely sold to this concept of the micro channel. I think it works uh, maybe in about 10% uh, of CTOs, but where it works, it saves you such a, uh, it's just so quick, like in this particular case. It appeared when we took a picture that there may be some micro channels, and it really worked out. That so wire just went very simple. Huh? And the same thing now you have the rotor wire down there and uh, the easy way of taking your transit catheter out is make a loop and just come back. We yeah. always say you don't have to go to the next state yeah. by taking out the transit catheter. Just uh, stay in that position, make a loop so and I mean, uh, looking, coming out. Looking a little more closely, show not, hand, not uh, much of... Show the hand also on the side, yeah. Not much of calcification there in the... Uh, but you're, you're still planning what a 1-5... Uh, uh, more than calcification, I think so much diffuse of diffuse... Disease? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so much of diffuse disease. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, you're right. I mean, the, if uh, somebody in this particular case, is it absolute... in? Indication for rota, I would say no. It's right. a relative. Relative indication, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Samin, this, it would be correct to point out that uh, with the only rare exception, you would always uh, have a bilateral cannulation and uh, your approach would be anti-grade uh, in majority of the cases, initially yes. to yeah. start. And, and clearly that uh, just by having a contralateral injection uh, has been uh, the predictor of positive success in majority of our uh, you know, CTO publication so that 
unless like this case where it's a more of a anti-grade bridge collateral uh, that uh, we go with the dual injection uh, by the contralateral and we go with a small four or five French of the other side compared to Japanese where we'll go both sides seven or eight French and largely because that uh, if anti-grade fails their second issue is that go retrograde. Now we actually try that if anti-grade fails basically still the goal is that bring back second time so I don't, uh, you are not a, a, a hugely enthusiastic supporter so far of the retrograde uh, as a, as a frontline. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, probably if you ask me that what is the, uh, we probably have not mastered, I mean I'll be very open to say, we have not mastered the retrograde technique or while we have mastered the anti-grade, like the step which you have shown, if, I, if, uh, if you ask me that of the 100 total occlusions, uh, which uh, 10 failed, where you think that retrograde might have worked, I would say probably in about 20% of those cases. And uh, therefore, a good anti-grade technique works quite well in majority of them. But yes, having a retrograde, uh, knowing the retrograde system, uh, it uh, clearly helps you uh, to get to um, improve your overall uh, success rate of CTO, uh, which may be required in a small percent of cases. Uh, same, uh, I think uh, going back to the point of uh, going, uh, I think, retrograde, is same. It's a very small percent, maybe two to three percent of the cases. You need to have the right uh, septals to get into the lumen, which is a very difficult case selection. You know, it's a very difficult case selection. Uh, Samin, any expanding use of CT and geograms for uh, these cases? Yeah, we actually, you know what? I think more and more in the new system, it's better if you have the even uh, in your lab but that you can uh, take the image patient have CTO. I know many people have a CT NGO in total occlusion cases to guide and so and so forth, guide, um, uh, the, guide the total occlusion direction. Go. So you have a one fiber, is that what yeah. you, okay? Same thing, we did our three steps to make sure that uh, the burr will not jump and this is where is the tightest lesion is. Slow pecking motion. Oh, how much? Every R time I keep going forward. How much RPM? How, how much RPM? RPM is about 150. Excellent. Good. And the, when the nurse says it's 20, we just wait. Samin, so, uh, going back uh, at this moment uh, for that slide, you mentioned about uh, where you are using uh, Prasrogrel today. High speed. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. So what are those uh, four or five conditions you mentioned? I think uh, because uh, people are struggling uh, in their own environment as to where uh, they should be transitioning into uh, Prasugrel. Yeah, I think uh, what happened is that a lot of people have started using it routinely. Now my only big uh, issue with that drug is it's a very potent, very good drug, but it is, will cause bleeding. So you need to be very, very careful. And we also know that while we are using this, that this is a drug which caused 0.2% higher fatal hemorrhage. We are not talking about minor or minor, major bleeding. Fatal hemorrhage was 2.2% higher in the trial. So clearly, that uh, uh, therefore uh, we are very cautious using the drug and uh, limited use. That what the percent will be? Probably about 30-35% of your cases just because the bleeding while the drug is very good but it is a very much prone for bleeding so you need to be careful i think we are done now yeah okay so same thing is how far you want to do rotational atherectomy we looked at it i think majority of the area has been covered we just do one run one more run hmm? yeah yeah do a run yeah 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 it almost uh, uh, nice perked up sorry, already sorry one seat Now, there is a one very near apical. Right. I think the 1.5 bar will be too much there. I don't think we need to go that far. We could leave that area alone, actually. Or maybe just a little balloon dilatation there. Right. Got. You want one more? Yeah, just do a polishing. Uh, anu, you had also in your uh, uh, description about uh, the CTO approaches, you had also mentioned the three very key statistics uh, which you are using for your CTOs, how much time you use, how much dye. Uh, so what, what was your uh, arbitrary cutoff you have? The time and the dye you, you'll use for a CTO. 
Yeah, basically 100 minutes we usually translate to up to total 3 hours of procedure time, 100 minutes of fluoro time, and the contrast volume uh, is actually, we keep it uh, 5 uh, uh, cc's per kilogram, uh, but it definitely, uh, you know, exceed many times because of uh, contralateral injection. I so, think it all goes also what's the baseline renal uh, uh, function of the patient because we do get patients uh, with the uh, renal insufficiency. In that case, you really have to cut down uh, your uh, uh, you know, die load. That's a very important uh, factor in this kind of uh, patients. Same, they have peripheral vascular disease, renal insufficiency, diabetes, and uh, not candidate for surgery. Likely for patients to go into renal failure uh, when we do this uh, long procedures. Uh, that, that LED is looking very nice already. It's a yeah. Okay, bring it up. It's a substantial vessel. Yeah. About two five very twenty balloon. And I think that's a, you know it explains that why this patient has a now antro mid anterior and anterolateral ischemia. See, there is a good size diagonal, second diagonal, uh, which has about sixty seventy percent osteal disease, Field and it's a long lesion. Fielder for the side yeah. bank. We go back to our original fielder. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. have it here. Good. We have the original fielder here. So now what we'll do is uh, take uh, your workhorse wire, whatever it is, and uh, go side by side in the main vessel. And what balloon is this? And it's a moderate size diagonal okay. which we are going to protect. So we're going to use I another wire in the. So once I have that wire, I'm going to take out the rotor Rota wire out. Good. Okay. And then put a wire into the diagonal now. Samin, they've been listening to your presentation carefully, and there's a question they want to have you explain the advantages of the Corsair, uh, why you felt that is Fielder better than out. the Tornus. Yeah, now it's basically Fielder. very simple because of the tip. Now you see that uh, the Tornus, problem with the Tornus is while it's good, it's the, you know, Tornus basically is our metal a uh, tip of the balloon. Now, the Corsair, the, but tornus is blunt. But the Corsair, because of the pointed tip, has an extra push. So that we actually used to use, a, uh, you know, Corsair in the past, uh, so tornus in the past. Now, because of many times, when the tornus did not go, Corsair went. So, and uh, Corsair, of course, uh, they have been uh, uh, made it as uh, the wire for the microchannel dilatation, uh, going through the microchannels and so. But otherwise, uh, uh, retrograde microchannels, but otherwise, in our practice, we are using this uh, the Corsair uh, over tornus because of ease of use, pointed tip, and uh, better success. So the both catheters are there. I think you need to just develop for people that you need to have your own experience. But I can tell you my personal experience has been uh, that by using the Corsair, we I found a Corsair a little much uh, simpler, pointed, uh, and uh, better crossability Go compared to tornus. Uh, very, mark. very sharp uh, uptake of that uh, yeah, yeah. diagonal Diag branch there. Yeah. Uh, what wire do you have there, That's Anu? a fielder. Okay. Yeah, that, that is going to be tricky. In the torque curve? No, in this case, I think we pro may need to get a little better curve. Right. There you go. Very good. It'll go. Okay. Let's dial it. Yeah. Now, clearly, that in this particular case, it's a vessel size is about 2.5 uh, millimeter. It's not a very big vessel, uh, 2.5 minus. Therefore, in those cases, it's perfectly fine that you use the, uh, our conve the, the conventional uh, stent or provisional stent approach. That basically, you try to do only stent the side branch in the cases where there will be a dissection and the vessel, uh, the timi flow becomes 0 or 1. Uh, otherwise, in this particular case, uh, th that I probably, uh, you know, we are not planning to put two stents, uh, just um, the, uh, not means the stent in the side branch. You probably will need two stents or maybe three stents in the LED. Uh, but uh, clearly, the point will be not to stent the side branch if so possible. So we have a long 2 5 20 millimeter uh, balloon. Uh, anu, uh, yes. monotherapy with bivalirudin for this case? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Same. Uh, in the uh, cases I'm like the one patient has already been on uh, antiplatelet therapy, and uh, no. when we are doing a total occlusion, uh, actually uh, intravenous glycoprotein 2B3A is a no-no. Right. 
just the yeah, and in the end, if you still have some dissections and you want to do it for the slow flow and so, just give boluses, uh, I, two bolus. I, I thought you would probably have gone a little more distally yeah. with the balloon there. Yeah, we probably may need to go there. I think uh, the goal is that that is small apical segment. Remember, this patient has an apical infarction. Right. So I think the apical yeah. area yeah. we we'll leave it we'll alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the site of CTO. Now yeah. this is a 2.520 NC Voyager. Uh, they're usually after rota will go with a high pressure balloon so that uh, knowing that the rota you're just doing a very little plaque modification but very important so that go with the high pressure balloon so that lesion has been fully expanded. Take a picture. Okay, Zion, sir, yeah, get no, us 2,528. No, no, we have to take the side back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, question is, we were there at that segment, right? Yeah, we're okay. Yeah. I think Apical, we can, we can leave it. it. Yeah. yeah, no, but the question is, and if you don't, no, but you had to do something, otherwise vessel will close. You Which go one? all the way to the apex. So if you put a stent there at the dissected area. Go, 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 so you're not go, planning to go, go, do go, go, anything for the ostium of the diagonal at this Yeah, place? no, no, we are going to. Go further. Okay. Don't worry. 2-0. This is 2 That's okay. That's okay. Go. So this is the same 2-5 balloon. Yeah. We might need a 2-0. Okay. Yeah, 2 20 Okay. Now you see the uh, play the last one. Yeah. No, the diagonal, uh, the ostium, uh, we particularly will uh, open uh, here, knowing that majority of these cases we had taken care by using the uh, cutting balloon and uh, plus. Now this is where we are. There's clearly the diagonal ostium is disease. It's about 2.25 millimeter vessel, but uh, we will uh, modify the ostium before uh, uh, extending across, because we need to put a stent across here. Now, with the, basically, we are doing now 2020. It's a Maverick 2. Maverick 2, yeah, yeah. long. Long, we are 2020 and try to open that apex a little bit. Yeah. Got it. And you went with the smaller balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Smaller balloon, because it's a small vessel. Makes sense. And, and same, same, what you see is crack so, the lesion. So, so, I mean, for all these uh, lesions uh, where uh, you have uh, significant side branches which you want to protect, uh, what's your uh, stent of choice? Yeah, clearly that uh, we learned that second generation stent. Now, basically what we did in this lesion, that we have uh, cracked the lesion, and now you leave it at about uh, half of that. It l broke up at about 14 atmosphere, and now it's at 7 atmosphere for about 60, 70 seconds, and it will give you a, like a balloon uh, stent-like results many times. Purpose there is that you crack the plaque, and the moderate pressure basically will tack up those dissections. Uh, and, um, and this is what we expect in this particular case. Okay. Now, basically, in this kind of case where uh, for the side branch protection, Two I would say uh, that it will be a perfectly, that a perfectly fine in this particular case that you treat the lesion of the side branch just before the stent placement. So there has to be that step, has to be just a step before your stent placement, leave the wire, and second generation stents. Actually, it's true for both Endeavor as well as Zions, that lower side branch closure compared to the first generation stent trials uh, in uh, uh, both uh, Endeavor trial and the Sprit trials and so that clearly that compared to Texas and Cypher, the second generation stent have a lower, significantly lower side branch closure and lower myocardial infarction resultant of it. Uh, and uh, therefore, clearly in this case, uh, we are going to use the Zions uh, for that purpose. Though now we have done this 2.20 and we are going to bring back into the guide and see how things are and then we go further. Uh, for the stand placement and so. Ready? You want to put back a little bit? Good. Yeah, I, I yeah. like it because I think the improved yeah. uh, distal yeah. runoff yeah. will yeah. only improve yeah. the okay. stand okay. patency. Uh, Samin, uh, uh, yeah. we are uh, about five minutes from the transmission yeah. time. I think we can take a few minutes extra, but yeah. uh, just want to bring you up can to speed. Can we make speed. it 9, 10 or no? Yeah, nine yes, five, I yeah. think you should be. I yeah. think you're making excellent progress. We've covered uh, a lot of ground, and uh, this has been uh, so of great educational or? value. Okay, 2528, Zions. Uh, I've also been fascinated. Uh, we did a little uh, a review from uh, a lot of viewers, and I am understanding that uh, majority of the people, Steve Jobs will be delighted to hear that, that uh, the live streaming on the iPhone is the more popular mode. <laughs> you know, that should help, uh, you know, with all the trouble they've been having with their iPhone. Yeah, the, that, that's the thing, that uh, Steve Jobs, I think, becoming uh, too, uh, too complacent. 
Well, we yeah. know they, the, I, I follow the market sometimes, and they have their results coming today. So, so but he should be cheered Good. to know that uh, well. complex coronary interventions are being watched on the iPhone. Yep, and uh, hopefully that uh, the, I change my iPhone to uh, uh, the new uh, uh, G4, and uh, hopefully that will be a little better now. So you'll you'll get a free bumper now to <laughs> put there, needs. and uh, hopefully not miss your calls. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, as a reminder, you, our uh, next transmission is August 17th, 8 in the morning, and uh, uh, have your questions keep coming. Uh, the session will be put immediately online for the archiving, and all the slides will be there, too. So what, what, what do you have there now? There is a, it's a 2.5, uh, 28, 28 zions, and we have just dilated, uh, deploy the stent at um, 12 atmosphere, and clearly that opening inlet because we are going to put two stands there so that, that we have opened up a little uh, at a 16 atmosphere approximately because we are going to put a 30 uh, 28 uh, this is the area of the total occlusion now the 16 atmosphere is a little different than your strategy which yeah. you normally recommend no for it design. means for the stand deployment that's why the stand was deployed at 12 16 Excellent. i brought it only in the proximal one third of the stand because we are going to put a larger stand now so that inflow of the first stand it's like a funnel-shaped opening now, so that we can, uh, the next stand will go without any problem. No, no picture, no picture. Yeah, for that purpose. Yeah. Yeah, good. 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 Okay, now, what we are trying to do here, because this question always comes, that why cutting balloon versus um, angiosculpt, and I can tell you we'll have the answer on the live. Uh, this is now we have selected, it's a, knowing that it's a 2.25 millimeter vessel, I always say, in the de novo vessel, for atherotomy balloons, you just go smaller. So this is now, we actually have this 2-0, uh, 10 millimeter angiosculpt. Same, I'm having some yeah. trouble. All you do is, uh, you know, gradual movements like you see here, a little bit forward, it will go. Your uh, distal vessel was looking all right in the previous view? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Little flush, ready? Okay. We'll yeah. go up. Yeah, now many times, even if you don't have a full... Uh, these cutting balloons or angiosculpt completely, as long as your nose is there, it will open up the plaque and you subsequently will open. Now, this case, I've gone to 14 atmosphere and try to do two inflation. And goal here is there's a lot of disease after the ostium, but we want to keep the ostium open so that we are dilated with the 14 atmosphere. And uh, two inflations, I always say, uh, the weather stent or any, because second inflation usually then goes against the uh, cause more uniform. No. Huh? the more uniform expansion of the lumen, whether it's a stent, the more circular expansion of the stent, and so, and uh, the do it for about 15, 20 seconds. We come back in the guide and uh, see it from there. Can you Ready? Can regular margin, they may not be able to see it. Okay. Good. So far, so good, which we say SFSG. <laughs> Good. Yes, the diagonal yeah. is looking good, yep. and you just have to take care of that mid-segment now. All right. Therefore, uh, uh, contrary to my teaching usually, that cutting balloon does great job of the uh, side branch compared to angiosculpt. Here, angiosculpt has done a good job. It has done a very good job, and yep. I think uh, the, the comments you made as to how to gradually inflate it, I think, are also very meaningful. Uh, one more question has come in. Should people stop uh, making trips to Japan to learn CTOs? Probably. Well, yeah. All right. So we'll send yeah. them to Mount Sinai. No, they can watch on the iPhone now. They can yeah. watch on the iPhone. Yeah. The step, uh, step wise Actually, biotech. what has happened now is uh, the fellows are seeing patients. They are in the clinic uh, discharging patients, and they are watching on the iPhone. That is the new thing they told me today. Yes. I bet you that is what is happening uh, with the live transmission in Singapore also. Yes. We actually, you know, the same in India, same... Uh, uh, but the Singapore, China, Australia. We got a lot of uh, uh, the calls, uh, may, you know, the positive feedback from Australia. And particularly, the just to many of these web uh, hits of the month, uh, for the July of last year, we already have about 3,300 uh, live hits for our, uh, of the last uh, July uh, web case. Uh, and uh, this just has been a very phenomenal. Ready? Uh, what length? Yeah. What Probably. length is that? Uh, the this stent? is a 30, 30 oh, uh, sorry, 3 or oh 28 Zions. Yeah, you wonder See, if 30 would have been. Again, 12 atmosphere. Uh, yeah, right. But I think this should be okay. With same 12 atmosphere, a uh, few seconds, and then the second inflation. 
and then we may go a little distally to cover the area the overlap you need to go and uh, do a dilation right well i think uh, this will have a very nice tapering uh, almost a natural uh, curve to the way the vessel uh, configures two or balloon yeah. two or two or 20 balloon yeah, that good. we had we yeah, just good, need good, it again. good fine yeah we'll uh, you saw lil we probably will need that 2 or 20 balloon in the end to patch up uh, a little bit of the distal area and now question remains is uh, the, there are a lot of issues which i have put down question mark in my bifurcation uh, the talk uh, the talks there what wire to be left i think all the wires are okay to be left there is some question whether hydrophilic or no hydrophilic but as long as the wire is not curled up wire is not in a small branch and the spring which is the radio lucent portion is not at the ostium because if you leave at ostium it may unwind completely so that as long as those things are not there it's completely fine to leave the wire and when you remove the wire which actually anno will show that you just have to pull the guide out and jiggle motion will take it out ready we take a picture now this will be the moment of truth and yeah, you have looks, very uh, wow. looks wonderful I think we can just uh, yeah the wiring from uh, practical purposes we can finish it I think we although we started a little late but show the yeah uh, take this wire out uh, sorry uh, this balloon I'm out taking and taking out the yeah. side branch wire, wire same and show the hand movement yeah. here the guide is coming out. out yeah good see it comes out without any problem no I think uh, that that point is a very good uh, one of uh, that it should be advanced and not be at the 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 junction there. and the, with that there is the no fracture any cases of the fracture of the wire we have seen and knowing that uh, this technique of leaving wires has been in thousands of cases now that only cases have been where the wire uh, sure. the either this radio uh, lucent uh, radio opaque portion was at the ostium or wire was curled up and was in a very third or fourth branch uh, level branch of the small vessel then you try to pull it will be a problem now if you try to pull the wire and the wire does not come out despite disengaging what you need to do then is that since your wire is behind the stent struts so that you should do that try to bring a balloon because knowing that these are the monorail uh, uh, you know the wires if you try to bring up uh, you try to pull you don't exert that tension at the tip so what you do is just bring the balloon on the jailed wire yeah and that uh, bring on the jailed wire and into the proximal segment of the vessel of course you know that you cannot go behind it but definitely bring it into the proximal portion of the uh, the vessel and then you pull the wire and you are able to uh, ex- the, uh, remove the wire with that because many time patient will feel when you are removing the wire that they are very um, uh, tough and cannot come and of course more so with the closed cell designs of the Thank previous you. first generation with this second generation stands both zions and endeavor it has been a very easy sale that you can really um, uh, take them out uh, without much problem so uh, this, this is your touching up with the two o balloon now yeah, yeah. the distal uh, portion so mean where we did a ptca we just leaving a two o balloon at uh, five atmospheres will probably leave it for 3 minutes so mean uh, excellent uh, uh, teaching points about uh, uh, pulling out uh, i know there are people who con- Uh, who constantly ask us about uh, their concern with jailed uh, uh, wires and side branches so those are uh, very very useful points uh, particularly how they can use a balloon if uh, the wire is stuck uh, so you are going to leave this there for a few minutes uh, yes. should uh, yeah, yeah uh, i think I we think, can go uh, back to the, our last slide uh, of uh, because i think we should just show this because we are about done we should be out uh, even with the, we can continue a little more uh, uh, yeah, prolonged nice inflation huh picture looks nice now we need one more oh. we need to make it better once you have already shown this you have to do it okay come back in the guide and we take a picture and we uh, uh, just show the last take home message which basically what we have uh, spoken about and uh, okay so i mean we did not uh, we need to see the last uh, angiogram uh, your slide came on for a moment if we can show the okay show the uh, if we can uh, yeah. Yeah. okay let yeah. that run please yeah. Mm, that looks outstanding yeah. absolutely we'll just, outstanding yeah. wonderful tapering caliber of a large yeah. led which explains uh, why the patient was having uh, uh, so much uh, ischemia from that site uh, anu excellent job samin you have a final take home message for us yes it basically uh, issue which have been we have spoken step by step that all these complex cases we just need to have our strategy plan 
So you need to discuss. Because I, we tell our fellows that, of course, every case you need to see. But in the complex case, you make sure you have a planned strategy beforehand. And of course, you can change it during the case, but it has to be very clear-cut plan before starting it. And this is basically uh, the point we wanted to make, that also that, um, that these uh, devices are available. Many of them are available. It uh, sometimes does increase the cost of the procedure. But what has made us is a successful and a better operator. And we can come to the last, uh, just our uh, back here. And see just another uh, final point, if you see in the caudal picture, uh, Samir, that distal LED, this is the way the vessel Everything. normally looks uh, after do, having a good angioplasty, you know, that we crack the lesion, left the balloon for a couple of minutes, and it's a good angioplasty result. We don't see any dissection that is a flow limiting. So this kind of vessels, they normally heal, and uh, if ever they come back, we see the lumen will be nicely uh, patent in the distal uh, LED. Outstanding uh, point, Tanu. Uh, uh, excellent case. Uh, beautiful demonstration of the technique in transitioning uh, from your wires. And to me, the, the best part of the case today was uh, uh, the follow-up of the previous failed case, the critical importance of uh, bringing these patients down and uh, Samin's uh, uh, wonderful uh, pragmatic explanations as to the purpose of a staged uh, intervention for a CTO. Any final comments uh, from you? Congratulations on an absolutely outstanding team. Uh, you've got uh, two NBA players behind you, I can see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, are, they are our uh, fellows. And uh, just to say, again, we have a new batch of fellows uh, who have been watching uh, with their uh, iPhone uh, and uh, doing their work. And of course, uh, we cannot do this kind of complex cases without uh, the support from our nurses. Uh, technician uh, and the nurse practitioners and uh, thank you for all the watchers uh, uh, thank you samir all right thank you uh, samin congratulations to you too and to your team and uh, that concludes our session for today we'll be back with session number 14 on august 17th at 8 in the morning right. thank you Good.